morning guys so it's been a little while since the last video and that is because uh, we've been doing quite a bit of brush work and with these derecho winds on Monday we've had quite a bit to clean up so fortunately for us though we do not have any structural damage. The field in front of our house uh, does have some green snap and down corn in it. Fortunately though that is the only field uh, that we have any issues in. Uh, pretty well leveled the beans in the area whether they were drilled or 30 inch or 15s whatever row spacing. Pretty much laid them completely flat like uh, you rolled them. They did spring back up though, so those should be okay. Nothing, however, compared to the guys out west. I can't believe uh, the pictures I've seen out west. I, it's unbelievable. So yesterday we ended up getting 14 boxes of wheat. Uh, we do have about two more shipments coming yet for more customers. The majority of this will be for our customers that have ordered wheat. We do have wheat for ourselves next year. We're going to be putting out roughly a hundred and some acres, 110 acres there on the big pivot. We decided economically makes more sense to put wheat and double crop beans out than corn. Even though wheat's a gamble, especially with the freezes in the spring, we did come out pretty good this year on wheat. The remaining 30, 35 acres in that big irrigated field we will put to cereal rye and we're thinking about getting some hybrid rye. So then next year we will have roughly 50 acres of cereal rye put out for cover crop seed for next year. This wagon here is still full of rye. The grain cart still has roughly about five six hundred bushel in it yet and uh, today we are going to get the way wagon hooked up put 90 bushel of rye out of the auger wagon a seed customer of ours in wanita needs about 50 some bushel of rye and the remaining rye that's in that way wagon then we will use for our cover crop blend uh, that we're going to end up making here with the cover crop seed that we got from center seeds which is crimson clover, balanza clover, and I believe, uh, and radish. Taproot radish is what they call it. It's just, uh, radish. We will be getting that all mixed up and putting that across our 80 acres on this afternoon. I've got to go do some drone work up in Laporte. And we're going to also get the grain cart unhooked and the 8530 hooked up to the applicator again. And we're going to get that applicator cleaned up and put the agitation valve on it that we needed earlier this season when we were side dressing, which for some reason we thought that it would come with an agitation valve and it didn't, so we ordered the parts to put the agitation valve on it. Rachel was not kind to our ditch bank here. Pretty much majority of the trees on the east side of that ditch bank are down in the alfalfa, which thankfully that's in alfalfa and not corn or beans. You can kind of see some of the issues that we're having out in the corn out there. Nothing compared to what they're seeing out west. Prayers to you guys out west. It's unbelievable what you guys are going through compared to our area. I'll roll some drone footage of what this field looks like and what this looks like from the air and also uh, just uh, about a mile, mile and a half that way, about 10 electric poles were snapped clean off and uh, that was pretty wild to see also.
while back when we were hauling some corn a couple weeks ago, the one motor on the bin auger for the south bin uh, went out. So Grandpa is going to go and pick that up since they fixed that. And uh, we're going to get that put on and probably I'm going to have to haul a couple loads of corn up to Union later today. Where do you think you're going? Come on. Loading both trucks, that way uh, we can get this north holding bin empty. Both holding bins, though, act as wet bin storage for the dryer. So we primarily, however, load out of the north bin, though. So that way, once the north bin is empty, uh, we can start running corn out of the south bin. GSI bin. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's a new Genesis EB hopper. Man, that looks nice. Check those out down at the National Farm Machinery Show back in February. Must be hauling out of Union. Hey guys, so yesterday I ended up getting four loads of corn hauled. I do have one for sure that needs to go in today. Possibly two more. We'll see what the market does. Dad ended up getting the cover crop seed all mixed up and he actually ran that over to our custom applicator this morning. And they're going to get that spread this morning on that 30 some acres of wheat stubble that we have over down on grandma's. And this afternoon after the duels go on on the 8530, the applicator gets pressure washed and winterized and backed in the shed. The 8530 is getting hooked up to the vertical till and I'm going to get that cover crop seed worked in. <laughs> on the vertical till is one, 
because the vertical till is not going to be set near as deep as what we run for uh, fall vertical tillage slash spring vertical tillage for especially on the corn stalks. Uh, on that we run anywhere from an inch and three quarters to about two and a half to two and a quarter and the vertical till takes about eight to ten horsepower per foot and at 4650 is putting about 230 235 horse at 85 30 puts out about 330 horse so since we're going to shallow that up quite a bit because this clover seed that we're putting out bonanza and crimson does not hardly need to be worked in whatsoever uh, we're just basically going to skim across the top with the vertical till uh, the 4650 should not have an issue pulling it primarily keep that on the 8530 but since the applicator is not quite done being winterized I need to run some water in it flush some water through those wide drops and we're probably going to end up dumping a little bit of antifreeze in that running that through the pumps by the time I get that done dad should be just about getting done with that field over there and uh, we'll decide what we're going to do the rest of the day I've got some more drone work to do actually yesterday afternoon I ended up getting some drone work and having to uh, scout about 75 acres of corn for a neighbor. And I gotta go show him the map sometime this afternoon for that as well. <laughs> until we left our house over there that the 4650 only has a quarter of a tank of fuel so I'm gonna run some fuel over to him got the water flushed through the uh, applicator just waiting for it to drain out and uh, he said when he was headed over to grandma's he saw that something weird seemed to be going on in the center of that big irrigator over on those 30 inch row beans he said it looked like a nozzle was spraying kind of funny he said uh, go ahead and take the drone down there and uh, see what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and, since that's right along the way, stop there and uh, see what we can find out.
I couldn't find anything. If it if there was an issue, it must have got self-corrected out there because I can't see nothing wrong with any of those nozzles. They look good and the beans look really, really good. a nice job. Great Plains Turbo Max 3000, 30 foot Turbo Max. Finally, we have this applicator winterized and ready to be put in the shed. So we're going to get this put away, put this beside the planter, bring the 8530 back. We will put the duals back on on this tractor and get this done. For this fall, the 4650 will be on the vertical till, at least running bean ground, working cover crop in. Uh, when we get into corn ground, though, I would like to run the uh, 8530 on that. Till next year. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.